Welcome to lab seven. We're starting muscles. We are going to look at the muscles of the head, neck, and trunk today. With this practical specifically, besides being able to identify the muscles, you are also going to need to identify the action to muscles. So these are things that you're going to have to work on learning for this specific practical. Identifying the muscle and the action of the muscle. I have the actions of the muscle written throughout this PowerPoint. So I'm gonna start directly with the muscles of the head and the face. In the neck. So there's a lot of muscles here. You don't need to know all of them. I'm going to start at the top. We have occipital frontalis. Occipital frontalis, on your sheet, it is split up into two separate muscles. We have frontalis, and then in the back, we'll have occipitalis. So you just need to know this as this muscle right here as frontalis. Frontalis is the muscle that raises your eyebrows. So when you go to raise your eyebrows up, you're actually using frontalis to do that. Temporalis is on the side over here, covers that temporal bone. Temporalis, we go down to the chart on the next page. Which is space doesn't have it. It elevates and it retracts the mandible. That temporalis. So it closes your mouth and it retracts. So it lets your jaw go backwards. Frontalis, as I said, it raises those eyebrows. Obicularis oculi. Obicularis is for circular, so this muscle is that circular muscle around your eye. Obicularis oculi closes your eyes. We also have an obicularis oris. This is the one that goes around the mouth. This is a muscle that lets you pucker. Masseter is this muscle that kind of runs along here between that zygomatic bone and that mandible. So when it contracts, it's going to elevate the mandible. So it helps you close your mouth. Buccinator. This picture doesn't have buccinator. Oh, it kind of does. It's not the best view of buccinator here. Buccinator is this little muscle back in here. It sits underneath masseter. It helps to compress the cheeks. There's another one on here that you can see pretty well. Zygomaticus major. Whenever we have a muscle that has labeled major and minor, major is always below the minor. You don't have to, you're not learning the minors, but just kind of as an FYI, the majors are below the minors. So zygomaticus major here, it raises the corners of your mouth. This is the muscle that lets you smile. So here, yeah, that front hallus. Here's the backside. 
this muscle right here, that is that occipitalis, as it's labeled on your sheet. So here you can see that masseter running up and down, that buccinator that sits underneath it. You've got that zygomaticus major that lets you smile, that obicularis oculi, that obicularis oris. Now we can even get into the neck. We have that sternocleidomastoid. This one tells you right where it starts and right where it ends. Sternum, sternocleido, sternum, clavicle, and it inserts into that mastoid process. So sternocleidomastoid. So that occipitalis is going to draw that scalp posteriorly. So it pulls your scalp towards the back. That zygobaticus major said so raises the corners of your mouth. Then I said we could see that sternocleidomastoid. This is one that helps to rotate your head from side to side. Also lets you laterally flex. So it takes your ear down to your shoulder. Here's a better view if we take off some of the layers. You can see that temporalis better. Those are the pterygoids. Those are not what I wanted. Buccinator sitting back through here. You can still see that obicularis oris. The back. Here you can see that sternocleidomastoid coming into that mastoid process. Now we're going into those neck muscles. Technically on the neck, you just need that sternocleidomastoid. But there is this muscle here you also need that's called levator scapulae. It tells you what it does. So levator scapulae is this muscle here. It attaches to the scapula and it actually starts at those first three to four cervical vertebrae, it starts there and then it goes down to that scapula. That's why sometimes if you're holding your shoulders up, tensing your shoulder muscles, you can feel it in your neck because this muscle attaches to your neck. So I come down to that next chart. Levator scapulae elevates that scapula. I told you it says exactly what it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay, we have a group of muscles, three groups of muscles technically, that run the entire length of the spine. The one that is the furthest out is iliocostalis. The next one is longissimus, and then the one in the middle is spinalis. Here's spinalis. They're labeled on these for what area they are found in. So like this says spinalis thoraces, iliocostalis thoraces, because it's in the thoracic. We have lumbar, we have cervical of these exact same. We even have capitis. Capitis are the ones that attach up to the, the skull. That's just where those names are. That's what they mean. These group of muscles that run the entire length of the spine, here's that iliocostalis lumborum. We have that iliocostalis longissimus spinalis. These are known as the erector spinae muscles. How do I know them? This is where a mnemonic stuck in my head from when I first learned these and it never left. I learned them as the I love spaghetti muscles. I, iliocostalis, spaghetti, or no love, I love longissimus spaghetti spinalis. There's, I love spaghetti, iliocostalis, longissimus spinalis. That is how I learned these group of muscles. Here's just another view of them all right next to each other. It's listed here as the erector spinae, so you can get that idea. 
Then we have iliocostalis, longissimus, spinalis. This group of muscles, they're listed out separately, but they all have the same motion. Laterally flexes your spine, extension and rotation of the spine. So that is what these, this group of muscles, this group that is known as the erector, I put two R's in there and there's no two R, there isn't two R's. Spinae muscles do. Okay, this very large muscle that makes up a lot of that back. Here, this one through here, that is latissimus dorsi. Latissimus dorsi, it attaches to your arm. So latissimus dorsi is going to move that arm. So it abducts, or adducts, so it brings your arm back down towards the middle. It extends, so it takes your arm behind you, and it medially rotates the arm at the shoulder joint. So if you bend your arm at a 90 degree angle and you take it in towards your abdomen, your stomach, that's medially rotating your arm. Terry's major, that is this muscle right here that's on the scapula and attaches again to the humerus. I told you about that supraspinatus when we talked about the bones. Well, here it is, supraspinatus that is sitting up in that suprascapular fossa. It goes underneath that acromion process technically. Then we have infraspinatus that sits in that infraspinous fossa. These are attaching to the humerus, so they're gonna help to move that humerus. That infraspinatus, it is, works to laterally rotate the arm at the shoulder joint. Supraspinatus, that first 15 degrees of shoulder abduction. So it starts moving your arm away from that midline, deltoid picks up after that. Supraspinatus starts it, deltoid finishes it. Mm. Seeing what else was there. Okay. This muscle, for some reason, I could not find a good picture of it in your textbook. This large triangle, or not triangle, diamond. Get my shapes right. This large diamond on your back is known as trapezius. Trapezius will move the scapula because it inserts into the scapula. The insertion of a muscle is the movable portion of that muscle. So that trapezius here is gonna take that scapula and it's gonna rotate it up. It's gonna adduct that scapula. So it's gonna bring it back down and it depresses that scapula. So it helps to, when you push your shoulder down, that's that trapezius doing that motion. So here's another view of that supraspinatus up in that supraspinous fossa, that infraspinatus and that infraspinous fossa. I told you about that subscapular or that subscapular fossa. That is where that subscapularis fits into. That subscapularis fits in that subscapular fossa. This is the one that faces the rib cage. So this muscle sits in that subscapular fossa that's facing that rib cage. So that subscapularis, it medially rotates the shoulder. So there's a couple muscles that medially rotate that shoulder now. Terry's major. That extends the arm at the shoulder joint. So it allows your arm to go behind you. That is this muscle right here, that Terry's major. I haven't done serratus anterior. Here it is. Serratus anterior. 
It is this group of muscles through here. This group of muscles is known as serratus anterior. You can see it on the side with all the muscles attached. You can see it on the other side without the pectoralis, your pec muscles. This muscle will work to abduct the scapula and rotate it upwards. So this muscle attaches to that scapula. So it helps that scapula go up and rotate it upwards. This muscle, serratus anterior, is known as the boxer's muscle. So anybody who's done any kind of boxing, you use this muscle a lot when you are boxing. So let's move on to the muscles of the front of our trunk now. We have pectoralis major, which is this large muscle through here. Rectus abdominis. Rectus abdominis is this group of muscles through here. This is the side you can see it on. It's technically under this aponeurosis that's sitting here. This is the six pack muscle. Is this, or even an eight pack I've seen on people. Rectus abdominis. So let's look at what these do. Pectoralis major. It adducts and medially rotates the arm. This is another muscle that adducts, brings your arm down towards your midline, and it medially rotates that arm towards that middle and that shoulder joint. So there's a few muscles that are doing this same movement now. And I pointed out rectus abdominis up there. It flexes the vertebral column and compresses that abdomen. So when you suck your stomach in, that's rectus abdominis helping. We have external oblique. External oblique muscle do it in blue, travels down towards the midline in the front. Internal oblique muscle, we see it on the opposite side, it's cut still, but just kind of internal oblique runs up. So they're running opposite of each other. In external oblique runs down towards the middle, internal oblique runs up. So they're running crisscross each other. And then the other abdominal muscle, this is a very deep one. That's that transversus abdominis. So this one just runs straight across in a transverse plane all the way and wraps around. These three more abdominal muscles, so we have external oblique and internal oblique, they have the same movement. Flexes the vertebral column, compresses the abdomen, and laterally flexes the vertebral column. Same thing. So flexes that vertebral column. It allows you to bend forwards. It compresses that abdomen, so it lets you suck your stomach in, and then it laterally flexes, so it lets you bend from side to side. That transversus abdominis, it just compresses that abdomen. It lets you suck your stomach in. So here's these same muscles found on a cadaver, just kind of seeing a little bit of difference there. We have that rectus abdominis, that six-pack muscle, that external oblique that's running down towards that middle. You see that pectoralis major, that serratus anterior here. Now if we take away some muscles. I wanted to find pectoralis minor. Here's pectoralis minor. Pectoralis minor sits underneath pectoralis major. So here's that muscle that attaches to the third, fourth, and fifth ribs. Pectoralis minor abducts the scapula and it rotates that scapula upwards. So when you raise your arm up, that pectoralis minor is helping to move that scapula. So you're able to move that arm. 
Because if you notice, it's a chromium process here on this scapula would stop that humerus from moving too far unless that scapula rotates up too so that humerus can continue to go up. Here's that serratus anterior from another view. Let's see, what am I missing? Diaphragm. Your diaphragm is this muscle that separates out that chest cavity from that abdominal cavity. This is a skeletal muscle that lets you breathe. So every time you take in a breath, this diaphragm is moving downwards. So that diaphragm helps with inhalation and exhalation. The last muscle of this group is that iliopsoas. That iliopsoas is technically made up of psoas major and iliacus. They come together and attach down to this femur. That is that iliopsoas. This, this muscle is the main hip flexor. So it allows you to flex your thigh at the hip joint. So when you pick your leg up in the front, bend your, that is that iliopsoas working to allow you to do that specific movement. So here are models of all of these pictures. So we have that frontalis. Here's that temporalis. You've got that zygomaticus major. You've got that buccinator. You have that masseter. What else do I have in here? Obicularis oris, zygomaticus major. Sternocleidomastoid is in here. You see part of the trapezius that's coming down over this shoulder here. So here's that frontalis, that temporalis, that sternocleidomastoid, obicularis oris, obicularis oculi. Mm -hmm. Just some other views that frontalis, orbicularis oculi, psychomaticus major. I don't want minor. We don't need minor. Masseter. Obicularis. This one is labeled wrong. Obicularis oris. That's sternocleidomastoid. Is that obicularis oris, zygomaticus major. So we've got all of these muscles through here that you guys need to know. These are the models that I will use to ask all your questions on. There will be questions that say, what muscle is this? There will be questions that say, what is the action of this highlighted muscle? So this goes through everything, all of the different muscles. So you can use all of these pictures here to help you with studying for this specific practical. You can, again, print these off, cut them out, only draw numbers to the ones you need to know because there's a lot of extras in here. Or if you've got flashcards, make your own. You can make them on Quizlet. There's pictures of all of these muscles highlighted on Quizlet as well. I've had students use those. Well, thank you very much for listening and have a wonderful day. Bye.